back in 2020, the big worry was that a president, for political purposes, would authorize a vaccine with limited safety and efficacy data. Many pundits worried that Donald Trump would do it as an October surprise in order to win the election. Of course, that didn't come to materialize. The FDA was given independence and Pfizer was given independence. And of course, that press release occurred after the election. That didn't happen. But over the course of the last year, this administration has done a lot of things that make one wonder about whether or not it is really leaving the FDA alone or whether or not it is putting its hand on the FDA and puppeting the FDA. The first thing was that Marion Gruber and Phil Krause resigned from the FDA. That's the director and deputy director of vaccine products. They resigned citing White House pressure on boosters. The White House went ahead anyway and pushed forward the third dose, the booster dose, first booster in everybody of all ages, uh, all adult ages. And that was done based on very shaky footing. And there was a lot of residual doubt as to whether or not a healthy, say, 22-year-old would have a further reduction in severe disease or hospitalization or death from that third dose. And I think that's still, to some degree, unanswered. It's unanswered at those young ages. Then the White House moved forward with yet another plan, the fourth dose, and they got a fourth dose authorized, a second booster, and people over the age of 50. And again, this was beyond what many people thought would happen. It's beyond what Pfizer even asked for. I believe they asked for 60 or 65. It's beyond what the Europeans were doing. The Europeans and the European CDC has announced there is no evidence to support a fourth dose in people under the age of 60. And so there was always some ambiguity about that fourth dose. Now, as of today, the White House has announced they're going to move forward with trying to get a fourth dose available for all Americans at all ages under the age of 50. This is a very controversial move. First, there's the mechanics of it. These kinds of decisions should not be made in the White House. All the news reporting in the Washington Post says that Ashish Jha and Anthony Fauci are convinced. Well, Ashish Jha and Anthony Fauci are not overlords of drug approval and vaccine approval. We have an independent regulatory agency. And you want to have an independent regulatory agency that's not accountable to politicians. But unfortunately, Ashish Jha is a political appointee. He should not be making the decision. It should be made by the FDA. The FDA has lost, I think, the two independent voices in vaccine products and is now really being puppeted by the White House. They are giving reasons for why they should pursue this. None of the reasons make a lot of sense. This is the Washington Post, quote, in addition, officials want to use vaccine doses that are reaching their expiration dates and would otherwise be discarded. I'm sorry, that's not a good reason. Authorizing a fourth dose for everyone because you want to clean out your freezer, that's not a good reason. You need to throw those doses out if they're gonna expire, that's not a reason to authorize them. I mean, you need evidence to authorize them. We'll come to that. In an interview, Anthony Fauci said, quote, he is leaning towards authorizing the second booster shots. Who gave him that authority? Leaning towards authorizing, he, he doesn't have that authority. That decision should be made by FDA and CDC. The NIAID director has no authority in this space. He's leaning to it. I don't need his leaning, I need evidence. And what I want is a randomized controlled trial. Now, why do I want a randomized controlled trial? Just because I like randomized trials? I, I like them because they give honest truth claims about whether or not products work. But I also think it's particularly necessary here because what you're talking about are millions and tens of millions of healthy Americans under the age of 50. You're talking about a medical product deployed on healthy people. There's an old saying in medicine, it's hard to take a healthy person, make them better off. These are people who've already gotten three doses. So it's very hard to make them better off with a fourth dose, particularly a fourth dose that doesn't target the prevailing strain. It targets an older ancestral strain, particularly when there's talk of moving to a bivalent booster by the fall. There's talk of that. And yet you're going to come in and intervene in the middle with another booster of the old Wuhan strain, which we know with a short period of time will wear off in terms of even the mildest of benefits, symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 reduction. I don't want leaning. I want randomized trials. And the last reason I want randomized trials, of course, Pfizer has 100 billion reasons to do it. They've made lots of money. And when we allow manufacturers to make money, the social contract is they have to provide evidence that their products make us better off. If not, you worry that what they're selling is a financial product, booster after booster after booster. We don't know if you're better off as a result, but we know we're richer. And that would be a financial product if that were the case. I don't know. I have a lot of doubt in under 50, you know, and I think a lot of people do too. Another reason they provide... Um, Administration experts are worried that subvariants of Omicron might be a little worse than earlier viral lineages. That's true, but might be a little worse and worry about that. That's not justification for medical product. There are lots of conditions that are bad. We don't approve product just because they're bad. We approve products if they work. The president of 
Kanawha County Commission pleaded with the agency for broader eligibility of booster shots. This is the Washington Post article. He pleaded with the agency. Well, you know, the president of Kanawha County Commission is not the be all end all of biomedical regulatory decision making. Ah, Peter Hotez is quoted. Peter Hotez, quote, we already have seen the benefits in 50 and older, he said, citing a pattern that's emerging with earlier data. Eventually, what's true for older people turns out to be true for younger folks. It just takes longer to reveal itself. He's conceding that he has no evidence. He's conceding. He's just saying that it might reveal itself in the future. By the way, the first part of the statement is false. For a 51-year-old, I think there's total ambiguity as to whether or not that fourth dose in a 51-year-old healthy person who had three doses, possibly also Omicron, whether that fourth dose confers benefit. Total ambiguity. I have no data that would tip me in one way or the other. When we talk about data here, we're talking about uncontrolled observational studies, typically from Israel, maybe Qatar, some other places. These are not suitable. These are not suitable for regulatory decision making. Why are they not suitable? One, they are running a project in the FDA trying to replicate or duplicate randomized control trials. That project has been press released as a failure. We cannot do that. If we could replicate and recapitulate randomized trials, we wouldn't often be doing randomized trials. We do randomized trials because we cannot predict the results. Two, there are clear confounds here, which are the people who rush to get extra doses of vaccine are fundamentally different than the people who don't rush to get those extra doses. And you don't know if the difference in SARS-CoV-2 rates is due to that extra dose or due to the type of person who rushes to get that fourth dose. We all know that type of person. The person who's rushing to get the fourth dose is probably also precautious in other ways, to say the least. You need, you need real evidence. Ran out of space on my memory card. Okay, the EU CDC says there is no such good evidence. I've not seen any good evidence. Certainly not seen randomized evidence. I haven't even seen reliable observational evidence. There is, in fact, a report that appears in the New England Journal of Medicine using a Poisson regression analysis coming from Israel. Those confidence intervals are so wide, we cannot say with confidence that the fourth dose has a reduction in symptomatic SARS-CoV-2 in younger individuals from that New England Journal of Medicine it's presented as a research letter with a large supplement. What are my take home points here? My take home points are, this is a tumultuous time for medical science. In these tumultuous times, I think you want to do something that is firmly justified by medical evidence. If you're gonna call yourself, we're the follow the science people, you want to follow the science. You don't wanna play fast and loose with regulatory decisions. You don't want to approve and authorize vaccines merely because they're about to expire in your freezer. You wanna clear out the freezer. That's not a good reason. You need evidence before you debut medical products. Now, you may feel confident that you're unlikely to get a safety signal, and I think that you're probably right. You're unlikely to get a novel safety signal, but you might get some safety signals. You're gonna get some people I, I, I think it's, all, it's inevitable. You will get some people having myocarditis. Can you tell those people in good conscience, a healthy 28 year old, that we know it's in your best interest to get that fourth dose, whatever risks there may be, small, we know that there's a benefit that offsets those risks. You can't say that to that person. You certainly can't tell society that we're doing this for the broader good of society because these vaccines don't halt transmission, end of story. And this vaccine, this fourth dose or fifth dose or sixth dose or seventh dose of the Wuhan strain will not halt transmission a few months after, in fact, probably a few weeks or a few days after the last dose when you get to eight, nine, 10, it's gonna wear off entirely and provide almost no benefit. Finally, as Paul Offit discusses, there is the biological concept of imprinting. Paul Offit says that we may be, quote, addicted to boosters. We may be suffering from a booster addiction, a booster delusion. And I think that's what this administration is suffering from. Now, frankly, I'm gonna read you the Paul Offit quote because I think it's good. Booster mania, he calls it. I do think a second booster shot does make sense for certain groups, but universal boosting strategy does not make sense, Offit said in an interview Monday, citing data showing that three doses of mRNA provides long lasting protection against severe disease. At some level, we're gonna have to get used to mild illness and moderate illness as part of this virus, which is gonna be rest with us for the rest of my life, the rest of my children's lives, and the rest of their children's lives. Of course, it's gonna be with us for thousands of years to come. He's spot on, he's spot on. He's a man of integrity to speak out against an administration that he um, holds important roles in on the FDA advisory committee. What's my point here? My point here is it actually doesn't make medical sense. It's actually, there's going to be a subpopulation that there's really a lot of ambiguity about the risks and benefits. There are going to be zealots that mandate this because private companies have been zealots in this space already. There's going to be pushback. There may be legal pushback. It may escalate again to the Supreme Court. There may be a different verdict. I don't know how that will all play out. I think it's not prudent. It's not prudent to continue to give Pfizer tens and hundreds of billions of dollars without them proving their products work. You have to prove it over and over again. There is a, a law of diminishing returns in biomedicine. Something can be great. The first dose can be terrific. Second dose can be pretty good. The third dose can be 
okay. But the fourth, fifth dose, at some point you have diminishing returns. I thought we got there for most young people probably after the first two. Other people may think it needs the third. We can debate that. But certainly now we are way beyond what anyone would possibly think is justified by evidence. The White House has commandeered the FDA in a way that had Trump done it, we would have been uh, pulling our hair out. There would have been widespread outrage. There has been little outrage because I think, once again, biomedicine and the professor group and the administration are largely on the same political side. I think that's unfortunate. I'm largely on the same political side as the left as well, but I'm willing to call uh, what I think is an egregious breach of, uh, uh, of norms. And this is an egregious breach of norms. You cannot have a sheesh jaw handpicked by the president telling the FDA what to do. Anthony Fauci's opinion is irrelevant, actually. He's, he's not at the FDA, he's not at the CDC, he's an IA director. Frankly, he should have stepped down a long time ago. I think it's wrong always for anybody to hold a leadership position for decades. I think that's wrong. I think all leaders should turn over. Um, particularly leaders in their 80s. I think they should turn over to make room for new ideas and new blood. I think it is wrong to hold a leadership position, uh, particularly one in a public institution for so long. That doesn't speak well. And it's also wrong to comment on things when you have no credible evidence and to lean in some way, which is not evidence. Leaning is not evidence. It is the lowest form of, of reasoning. This will backfire. And the backfire will be simple. There's going to be a number of states that are going to pass laws rescinding the standard childhood requirements. There's going to be outbreaks of measles, mumps, rubella, and all these other bad things. This is all a consequence of, of pushing too hard on COVID-19 vaccines. They didn't need to be pushed this hard. They don't need to be authorized indefinitely in perpetuity based on no credible evidence. We need to demand more and more evidence as time goes on. And as the risk to individuals gets lower, you need more evidence, better evidence, not weaker evidence. You cannot be seen um, to uh, be doing this for political expediency. They're facing a midterm election. They're going to want cases low going into the midterm. How do I know that they're thinking about the public health or thinking about their midterm prospects? I don't know. And that's why you don't want politicians making these calculations. You didn't want Trump deciding when the vaccine was safe to give. And you don't want Biden deciding when it's safe to give a fourth dose and a bivalent dose. You want independent regulators. The regulators who were independent have resigned. We are left in a shambles at the FDA. This will have haunting repercussions beyond vaccine development. The bar for all drug products will is already low. It's going to get lower. You're going to have a real crisis of credibility at the FDA. The FDA um, probably has already lost its place as the premier regulatory agency globally. Uh, it will continue to do so. This is very concerning stuff. Uh, people don't see. Uh, of course, political fortunes may change, and there may be a different party in charge someday. And when that party starts puppeting the FDA, then maybe people will start to realize that they made a big mistake by allowing this precedent. FDA should be firewalled from political pressure. Uh, what has happened now is uh, absolutely unacceptable. These arguments to support the fourth, fourth dose are unacceptable. There is no reason on God's green earth that we could not demand Pfizer do the proper study. Looking retrospectively in Israel, it doesn't show that this actually works. But even if it did, it wouldn't be compelling because of confounding reasons. We need really good studies. Um, and I worry what's going to happen. I think the backlash is going to be much more severe than people think. You pair this with the schools issue and you have the backlash to both and you're going to have sort of a catastrophic system, uh, catastrophic healthcare outcomes and catastrophic uh, uh, policies um, across uh, many states um, in, in response to this. Um, this was a mistake, total mistake. It's a political mistake. It's a public health mistake. It's a tactical mistake. Um, they painted themselves in a bad, bad spot. Actually, I mean, their broader calculation is, of course, um, cases are bad for them as they enter the midterm season. And so they want to reduce cases, but they're also absolutely know that politically it's not possible at all to institute any public health measures like masking and lockdowns. And whether or not those work is one thing, but they don't have the political capital to do it. So they're going to try to play this game of encouraging individuals to test often and mask and do these other things and give the fourth dose. But unfortunately, I don't think any of this is actually going to stop the problem because this will be a short-term transient effect and they will get more breakthroughs and they're not going to get a lot of sign up for this voluntarily because people are fatigued and they, people are, I think, doubtful of that the fourth dose of the original ancestral strain will help them. And I think they are going to uh, be doing a lot of things uh, merely for the appearance of having taken it seriously. Uh, it's not going to do much. There are going to be more cases. The vaccine cannot stop infection, so there will be breakthrough. If I were advising them, I would tell them there is, an, there is a better path forward. The path forward is you need to make sure tests are only used in places where testing can change clinical outcomes. So testing should be on hospital entry. Testing should be for people who are very vulnerable who get sick to see if they qualify for Paxlovid. You need to curtail the use of Paxlovid, not expand the use of Paxlovid beyond the randomized data. Paxlovid has proven benefit in people with multiple comorbidities and risk factors and unvaccinated. Maybe 
ask Pfizer and compel Pfizer to do the study in vaccinated people who are at high risk of the disease. I think that's the most promising, but giving blanket Paxlovid to healthy 20 year olds who have URI-like symptoms, that's a mistake, but the administration is going that way. They wanna be giving Paxlovid to all these people. You're better off trying to discourage testing in people who it cannot change anything. And you're better off restricting Paxlovid to people in whom it has clear benefit. And you're better off not pushing on vaccines that cannot halt transmission. You're better off taking a lighter touch here, acknowledging, as Paul Offit says, that mild and moderate infection we'll have to live with for the rest of our lives. You're better off heeding this. You are playing too hard. You're pushing too hard on this. You don't have data. I strongly suspect it's going to backfire. It's going to backfire both from a public health standpoint. I think that damage may already be done, but it will also backfire politically. And I, I, I think you have bad advisors. You're talking to the same people for year after year. You need some flat, fresh blood. You need some dissenting views at your table. Get someone at your table who disagrees with Ja and Fauci. They shouldn't be running the show. And then I think what you actually do want to do is create a firewall, stronger firewall between you and the FDA. So you can at least acknowledge that it's not all in your control. The FDA has their own independent regulatory space. Um, it was a big loss to lose Gruber and Kraus, and I think you should bring them back to the table number one and two. They should be at that table. So those are my thoughts. Crazy times, crazy times for evidence-based medicine. The, the deadening silence among academics is, is extremely problematic, and it speaks to how I think uh, how political academic medicine has become, and it's very, very concerning to me. So uh, until next time.